Hello everyone, my name is Jason Levine, and in this part two of our DSLR video for the Pro Photographer series, I'm going to be covering some of the editing basics inside of Premiere Pro. We're looking at the same timeline we were, uh, where, that we built up in part one. I've also added some additional images and video because what I'm wanting to do is I'm creating a sort of portfolio of images and video that I've shot around the world. What we're gonna cover here are some of the basics, things like using some different tools, doing things like transitions, whether it's cross dissolves or fade to black, and then we'll talk a bit about um, some of the preferences for when you bring your images in. So I think we should start there because that's typically the first question that people will ask. How long should the images last and how do I set those as defaults? Well, if we just take a simple image here, and if I drag this in, this actually right now is coming in for approximately five seconds. And this is a default that we can set in preferences. Now it's in slightly different locations on the Mac and PC. On the Mac, it's gonna be under Premiere Pro Preferences General. On the PC, it'll be under the Edit Menu Preferences General. But here we're going to find three things which I think you'll find essential. The main one is still image default duration, 150 frames. Now remember friends, because we're in video land, we're dealing in frames. Effectively, at 30 frames per second, 30 times five, five seconds, 150 frames. This is again, just a default. Similarly, if you were working with transitions, which we'll show you in a couple of minutes, the transition default is approximately 30 frames or approximately one second. So here's where you set those defaults. You might kind of set and forget this, just letting you know where this stuff is. And these can all be adjusted after the fact anyway. Well, using this simple image, because it's not moving yet, if I wanted to make this last five seconds or 10 seconds rather, or 15 seconds, I can with my Adobe Move tool selected. And by the way, your tools panel may be in different locations. Mine happen to be in the default location up at the top here. I'm gonna choose my selection tool, also known as the Move tool. And I can simply click and drag this out. And you'll see it's showing me how many additional seconds and frames I'm adding. So now this piece is 10 seconds long. It's that simple. And I just place my cursor over the edge. You'll see that you get these little uh, left and right arrows. Similar, similarly, if I go to the top, you'll see it there. And now I can shrink this up or drag it out however long I want. Fine, that's the basic idea. It works the same with video too. If we've got a video file, for instance, this video here, if I want to shrink this up, I can just click on the edge, shrink it, or make it longer. But that brings up an interesting point, because as you saw just a moment ago, what if I want to shrink it, but I want everything else to follow along? I want it to sort of ripple, delete all that dead space. So for that, you're going to use a keyboard shortcut. I know, I said I never use keyboard shortcuts. There are a few that you kind of have to use um, just to make life a bit easier. So for instance, right now we've got all of my images around five seconds in duration. If I wanted to say shrink this particular one up to two and a half seconds, I can drag my cursor over top of the image here. It's often easier to select it. You can also use the plus and minus keys to zoom in here, and that's going to zoom in to the center position of your time indicator or playhead. So I can zoom in a bit, come over here, and if I hold down the command key on the Mac or the control key on the PC, if I now click and drag, and you'll notice when I get to my cursor, do you see those lines there snapping to position? So snapping lines, very handy if you're trying to align things together. Um, when I release the mouse, you'll see that everything snaps into position. It ripple deletes. Let's go ahead and undo that so you can see the before. Let's redo it everything moves into position. Because if I didn't ripple delete, if I just simply clicked and dragged and snapped, now you've got this dead space. Now sometimes you wanna do that, um, but we wanted everything to ripple. Now remember, it works the same way too. What if I wanted to make this clip longer? Command key or, or uh, control key, drag it over to the right. Now everything moves over to the right. So that's known as ripple deleting. That's really handy, that's probably the tool and the feature that I'll use the most when I'm cutting things together. Now, since we're talking about cutting, what you will also do, again, in, in imagery, it's perhaps a bit different, but a lot of times in video, you're wanting to cut little pieces out. Maybe you set an in and out point and you realize you didn't want the middle. I'm gonna zoom back in and I can use shortcut key C or the razor tool rather. Again, shortcuts, different keyboards, I don't know. I, I, I never use them. I just always click on the icon here. So here's your razor tool up here. Looks like a little uh, a razor blade. I can set a little cut point simply by clicking right there. Put the playhead right here, cut. Now, how do I get rid of that? Well, I can right click and just cut 
but of course that's going to leave a hole. That's not typically what you want to do. Often what you want to do is, again, ripple delete. So if you right click and choose ripple delete, pay attention to the video, now the pieces slide together, okay? Okay, so let's undo all of that, bring that back to normal. Backslash on the US keyboard to zoom back out and show everything in full view. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to my uh, selection tool or the move tool. Again, it's shortcut key V, and that's the standard across most of your Adobe applications. Now, if I wanted to multiple select clips and move them around, from within here, I can actually click and drag. You notice I get this little sort of marquee selection box. I can select across these clips. Now be careful not to grab that little yellow handle there, right there. Currently that's working on opacity. We don't want to touch that, so just move the cursor down until it turns back into the black arrow. And now I can very freely move all of these selected clips around. Okay, also if I wanted to take everything, I can just click, drag, select, and move everything. Okay, real simple, easy, but things you need to know. If you just want to simply move something around, just make sure you're on that move tool makes things a lot easier. Okay, so now we've got that in there. Now it's time to talk about adding some transitions. So before we do that though, typically what I like to do is you, you don't generally wanna start your production, your video. You don't wanna start at zero with images, but a really common, useful, best practices technique is just to add a little black video, some basic black video at the end, or I should say at the beginning, and the end of your video edit. So to do that, you can go up to the file menu here and choose new, black video, and it's going to ask you to choose the frame size. It's going to base that frame size and frame rate on the settings of your sequence, which is very helpful. Click OK, all done, there we go. Now again, where do we wanna place this? We wanna place it at the beginning. So we could select all of our media here and move it and then place the black video in there and then trim it and do all of that. It, there's even an easier way. If we double click on that black video, bringing it into the source monitor, Make sure that your playhead, your current time indicator, is at the beginning of your timeline, and then come down to the bottom of the source monitor here where you will see we have something called the insert button. And if you click on insert, that's going to insert that black video before everything else begins. So now that we can transition from black, fade up into our image. So I can use my arrows and navigation to go to the end, and for the end, I can simply just click from within the window here and drag and drop it right there. Now, as mentioned, you've got lots of different options when you're talking about transitions. You can do the standard cross dissolve, you can fade from black, you can fade to white. There's lots of, you can wipe and pull and peel. Some of those are more tasteful or less tasteful than others. Let's start with the real basic ones, just adding some cross dissolves. So I'm gonna wind back here and let's go over down to the bottom left-hand corner where we have the effects, uh, the effects panel here twirl this up and you'll see that we have a section called video transitions. There's also audio transitions in there. And if we twirl down video transitions, you'll see that we've got lots of them. Again, 3D motion, page peels, slides. Those I say, use at your own risk. <laughs> um, and if we go to dissolve, you'll see that we have all the standards. Now again, the most common is the cross dissolve. And if you simply take this, we click on the cross dissolve, and we drag it, and we drag it between these two clips. Now that's a bit hard to see, so this is again where you might hit the plus key on your keyboard to zoom in a bit. Click on that cross dissolve. You can see that you can have it just dissolve the end of one, the beginning of another, or dissolve across the two. Now it's going to place this little cross dissolve from the black video going to the image, and here's what that looks like, okay? Now again, if we wanna place one between these two images here, I can do the same. Let's take a look at what that looks like. Wind back, play. Okay, very nice. Now again, we've got our cross dissolves. How do we adjust the duration of the cross dissolve? Well, there's a kind of really nice way that you can do it. If you come over here to where it says effects controls, click on the actual transition right here. You'll get a nice little display of what's actually happening. Now, that might be a bit complex. I'm gonna leave that screen on for just a second. Here's a really easy way to do it. You've got your time in the ruler here. You want to adjust the duration of your cross dissolve. Well, notice those little handles that we saw before when we were trimming clips, well, they apply to the dissolves as well. So if I want the dissolve to be longer, I can just drag it out, like so, very simply. You'll also notice that it's readjusted here. So now when we wind back, we have a nice fade up, okay? Similarly, I can come over here Let's zoom in a bit with my plus key, plus and minus keys. Adjust the cross dissolve, 
play it. And... Nice dissolve, okay? Now, another really common one, just to point out here, is uh, the, the fade to black. And I'm gonna show you the difference here. The, the thing with fade to black, and by the way, if you wanna remove a transition, you can right click, control click, and just choose clear, or you can actually select it and hit the delete key. Either one will work. Now, the nice thing with the dip to black, this kind of just gives it a bit more of a stylized look. You see this a lot with a lot of professional portfolios, literally having each image fade to black and then fade up again. It, it just looks a bit more polished. So if you look at the difference here, let's, let's show you here. Here's the fade to black. Well, you're not gonna see a difference at the top here. Let's look at this one, All right? Now that was really short. So let's zoom in again. Let's make this a bit longer. You can see it already, so just, it just feels a bit more dramatic. Wind back, fades to black, fades up from black. Now you might be looking at that going, I don't really see much of a difference. <laughs> Um, when you have lots of these on there, it just, I think, I think it looks a bit more stylized, a bit more groovy. So I tend to use dip to black a lot. Nothing wrong with cross dissolves. And of course you can mix and match. So you can have a cross dissolve in one place. You can have dip to black in another. You can have dip to white in another. You can have additive dissolve in another. It just depends, whatever you like. So once you've got your transitions here, by the way, you can add these same transitions between images and video. You'll see right there. So if we wanted to wind this back, if we wanted to elongate that dissolve right there, wind back a bit, let's play. Now, did you see how nice that looked? We had our image, I'll turn the sound down for a minute here, and it, and it fades, cross fades into the video. That's pretty sweet. So again, we've covered some basic mixing and matching. One last thing about scaling. So when we look at our image here, again, there's obviously a lot of this image missing. So if I select this image, if I select this piece or this clip now inside of my sequence, and I go up to effects controls, you'll see that we have motion opacity and time remapping. I'm going to twirl down motion, and inside motion you'll see we have position, scale, rotation, anchor point, anti-flicker. Okay, great. Scale is exactly what you think. So with the clip selected, if I choose scale, now you notice we have this hot text, and if I hover my mouse over it, we get these little left and right arrows. I can click on this and drag, and I can rescale this image accordingly, right? So we can adjust it to fit the size however we want. Now, in the next episode, I'm actually gonna talk about animating this. This is just giving you the basic location of where to adjust these things. Also, in terms of position, if I want to adjust the vertical position, I can do that here. If I want to adjust horizontal position, I can do that there. You've also got your opacity. So that's just the location of motion. In the next part, we're actually going to show you keyframing, talk about keyframing and adding those Ken Burns type effects um, to your images, to your video, to create some more motion, to create some more life. So stay tuned for the next one. Hope you've enjoyed this one. We'll see you in part three. Take care.